All right, what's going on guys? Try back again. Here to bring you another video. This video is going to be reviewing Game of Thrones Season 3, Episode Number 3, The Walk of Punishment. Okay, so finally Game of Thrones Season 3 has started to pick up the pace a bit. Um, definitely enjoy this episode a lot more than the other two for the season. I'd say so far this is the best episode of the season. At least something happened. And I've kind of figured out what's been going on with Season 3. And I think overall why a lot of people haven't liked it as much. Uh, I think the problem might be they have so many different storylines happening at once. Which they've always had a lot of storylines happening at once. But now they sh they're showing so many different ones that it almost feels like nothing is happening each episode because they're cutting across the different uh, you know, uh, scenes with the different locations so often that not enough progress is happening in any one. There's just a little bit of progress in each one. Um, which, I mean, it's not a bad thing, but at the same time, it's like it's a lot of cutting and jumping around. And uh, again, after the episode's done, you know, really feels like not too much has occurred during the episode. Now, this one wasn't really one of those. Uh, there was there was a ton of stuff going on with different locations, and different uh, characters, different scenes, everything like that. And there was a lot of jumping around. But at least something finally happened at the end of the episode, of course, as you guys saw. Uh, this review, of course, will contain spoilers. If any of you uh, haven't seen the episode yet, you may or may not want to watch this. So, straight up gangster style. Jamie Lannister gets his hand cut off brutally. I like the way they did it. Everything about it I thought was really well done, uh, especially how it seemed like, um, what was his name, Vargo? Yeah, Vargo, um, the guy who did it. It seemed like he was going to let him off the hook, like he was just going to scare him, and then all of a sudden he comes back and he just wham right down and slams and cuts his hand off. Good effects, everything like that, that was all good. And then right after, they play this like high school rebellious music, like right after it. I'm like, what the hell is this? Like it just... It did not fit the mood at all. They should have played something at the end, uh, right at that point when the credits rolled. They should have played something like ominous or dark or eerie or something like that. Definitely would have matched the scene way better. That definitely did not match that scene. Um, although maybe because Jamie throughout the series has kind of been like, you know, your villain type character. Uh, I'm talking about when he's fighting against Ned Stark and we are introduced to Ned as like, you know, the loving father figure, all these things. Uh, Jamie pushes Bran out the window, of course. He's introduced as your villain. So uh, maybe they felt like, well, you know, he's finally getting payback. It's punishment for what he did earlier on. You know, all these things he's done. Um, yeah, it was that. So they chose, you know, some more like upbeat type music in that. But it definitely didn't fit with like, you know, the universe and everything. It just felt too like uh, new school and modern, uh, modern type of music to be used in Game of Thrones, which is like, a, you know, that mythology type of, you know, you've got the, you know, War of Kings and all the, the stuff going on, medieval, not mythology, me medieval <laughs> type period, you know, you wouldn't have music like that, it just doesn't fit with it. Um, so hopefully they kind of, you know, get better at matching, <laughs> at least in my opinion, because I don't think that was good either. Uh, but it didn't totally ruin it. It was still a cool scene. It was still really exciting. I liked how Jamie talked them out of or talked him out of uh, doing what he was going to do to Brienne first. Uh, and then did that after, and it's it's kind of like you know if he kept his, I wonder if he kept his mouth shut if it would have been okay. Uh, it kind of seems like to me though that this Vargo character was just really pissed off because um, Jamie, you know, kind of jealous of him, what he's had to grow up with and everything. Just that he's just you know jealous of Jamie and everything that Jamie's had over the course of his life. That when he was talking to him, he just decided he was just going to do this. So, you know, it was exciting. It was a cool scene. I liked it. And finally get payback against Jamie. The thing about it, though, is that the payback in this show is so brutal. It's kind of like as it's happening, you feel bad for the character. So it's like, oh, man, I don't know if you deserve that. Like, you forget all the things that he's done in the past. So it's like, oh, man, that's so brutal. Same with Theon and what was happening to him. Like, just so brutal, you know. Um, by the way, speaking of which, um, all of his scenes I thought were, were a lot of fun in this episode, too. Trying to escape and everything like that. Almost getting... <laughs> raped uh brutal brutal man absolutely so glad he got saved of course that was uh well done scenes i liked all the scenes with him when he was on the horseback being chased that was really exciting as well and then of course when he gets pinned down that's really like oh no oh my god you know you can see his bare ass and everything it's like oh god um so th th that was pretty interesting i liked i liked all those scenes so both you know everything with uh, with theon and uh, with jamie and brianne 
that was all great. I liked uh, all those locations, so to speak. Uh, Daenerys um, strikes a deal to trade one of her dragons for soldiers. Um, hmm, let's see what happens with that. I'm pretty sure that's not going to go down legitly. Uh, maybe she'll give him a dragon, but it won't be to keep. It'll be to, you know, uh, flame his face off. Um, so that was okay. I liked all those scenes there. Sir Barristan being with her now is is kind of cool to see to see him around and hear his opinion on things. Plus, we know how good of a swordsman he is, like one of the best there is. So definitely that's going to help her out later on. Um, so all th those scenes were cool. Uh, Melisandre is leaving uh, Stannis temporarily uh, while they continue their sacrifices and all their madness that they're doing. Um, so, of course, we'll see her again later on. She's not going to be gone forever for sure. Uh, let's see. And then north of the wall, some cool um, developments. Uh, we got to see, I like the, the design for that... Um, uh, the White Walkers sort of ritual, whatever they were doing, you know, necromancy type ritual with all the was the horses parts uh, around in like a like a really cool shape like that, like you know where the uh, the lines come out. I don't know what you would call that. I'm sure there's a name for it, but I'm not sure what it is right now. Uh, and Mance Raider and everything like that. So John's gonna have to attack the wall. Uh, so we saw in the trailer. There's that one guy with the axes. He's he's uh, you know climbing up the wall with his axes and everything so that'll be pretty cool to see I can't wait to see how that all plays out the scenes and everything because we've kind of seen little clips of it during the trailer so that'll be cool to actually see what actually happens and that John's gonna be with him so that'll be fun uh, let's see um, scenes with Rob Stark were pretty good I mean the dialogue and everything was fine didn't uh, have anything against that. I liked um, the opening sequence when you have the, her uh, Catelyn's uncle was it I think and uh, he, he fires the arrow from all the way, you know, and, and hits the uh, the ship when the other guy couldn't do it. Or not the ship, but the little, you know, a grave um, boat, so to speak. Um, so that was cool. Uh, the scenes with Tyrion were pretty funny. I liked a lot of those scenes with Pod and everything. It was, it was fun. It was good stuff. I enjoyed it. And him getting named the uh, Master of Coin. So that'd be interesting to see as well. And, and Baelish getting married. <laughs> That's good. I, I can't wait to see that. That's just going to be fun as well. So all in all, I thought it was a good episode. Definitely the best of the season so far. I'm going to give it a 7.5 out of 10. thought it was really well done, uh, with the exception of the music at the end. And, um, you know, I mean, the environment's all as be beautiful as always. And um, all the characters' development was good. So I, I thought it was overall a really good episode. I enjoyed it quite a bit. And uh, looking forward to the rest of the season. Definitely improvement from the first two. And I hope it continues to improve and we get to see a lot more, you know, action, some war, developments, and just more things happening. They might want to cut down on the amount of uh, skipping around and focus more on particular, you know, characters in their scenes in order to uh, have more happen in each episode so that more things are occurring. Uh, because if they keep doing it this way, you know, there's so many things going on at once, it feels like nothing's happening overall. So that's the sense I get from it. Anyway, that's pretty much all i got to say about this episode. thought it was a good episode and everything. Really enjoyed it. I'm going to give it uh, that score. So uh, I'll call it here pretty much. Let me know what you guys thought about the uh, this week's episode, uh, how you felt about this season of Game of Thrones. And, um, you know, let's talk about it. That's it for this video, guys. I'll see you for the next one. This is Trev, and I'm saying peace.